Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where a dumb manager gets exactly what he asked for. Our next Reddit post is from Combustible Duck. So I had some attendance issues at an old job, but not really. The policy was that showing up within five minutes of your shift start time is still considered on time. Well, I had a manager who wanted to abruptly change corporate policy and define clearly that late means late. So for background, it's retail and I'm in my senior year of college. I am not making a career out of this job and I'm five years older than all of my coworkers. My immediate manager felt threatened by me as I had previously declined leadership positions to finish school. He always had something he needed to fix about me even though I had seven straight months of rock star performance, exceeding metrics by 10% above the goal and I frequently aided in training new employees. Once again, this was a college filler, not a career move for me. I'm not a bad employee. However, I was a busy employee. My last semester working there, I had five classes, and I would usually be at my shift within a minute or two of starting. So one day, my manager specifies that I'm late. It's 3.01, and my shift starts at 3 o'clock, to which I said, marginally. He, in front of the other co-workers, decides that he's going to put his foot down. No, OP, one minute late is late. So I stopped my task and calmly asked him, then what does it mean when I'm staying 45 minutes after my shift to help when we're short-staffed? And he said, we don't even want to have this conversation right now, and left. To be fair, he wasn't wrong, he just handled the situation wrong. If he wanted me to change something, we could have talked in private. But he wanted to swing dicks in front of the new hires. So, I complied. I made it a point to clock in and out exactly when my shift starts and ends. It was glorious. A couple of weeks later, he told me that I need to do something two minutes before my shift ends. So, I start the task. And two minutes later, I said, Sorry, manager, my shift is over. Clocked out and left. My mindset was, go ahead, try to fire the best employee on paper for working exactly his shift and not a second longer. He did not want to swing dicks after that. Our next Reddit post is from DME Rollerblades. This happened around two years ago at my old job, and shocker, it's the main reason that I quit. My job was basically a very easy warehousing job. I basically only pulled orders at that point. Later on, I would be trained on everything else, from shipping, kitting, putting away, everything. But I was a perfect fit for that, since I loved driving order picker. I was especially good at it. The bare minimum you had to hit during an 8-hour shift was around 230 boxes pulled, or 230 labels if you want to be precise. Since organization was a strong suit of mine, after a few weeks I was consistently able to pull over 350, then 400 boxes, topping out around 425. I always worked hard, and with other people quitting, within a year I was one of the most experienced people in my area. Between me training new employees, helping out with vehicle certifications, and coming in on weekends when work needed to be finished, I felt like an asset to the team. Since I was one of the most experienced people there, I was offered a raise if I could keep my numbers over 400 labels daily. Sure, it's a college job, but if I'm able to get more money by doing my job as well as I usually do it, sure. I accept, and they said my wage was updated and approved, so I got right to work and pulled my end of the deal. A week went by, and I got the same old paycheck. Another week, and the same old paycheck. Huh? What? I go to my manager's office and tell him calmly that my raise didn't get added to my paycheck. I get told, We thought about it, and we feel as if it's within your job responsibilities to be doing what you're doing, so we will not be giving you a monetary increase. So I realized, if they don't think that I deserve a raise, then why should I work harder? Suddenly, I dropped my daily quota to the bare minimum. You need me to stay after to complete orders? Nah, I'm going home. My shift ended five minutes ago. Shelves started to become disorganized because I didn't fix them as I went. All those small little things that I used to do to help out, I stopped doing. Little by little, complaints started to file in. From the lowest on the totem pole, working its way up slowly. 
Within two weeks, I got called back in and I was told that I was given the raise and it would be in this week's paycheck. Our next Reddit post is from Alwas. Several years ago, I worked for an aerospace manufacturing company as a setup operator. My job was to arrive before the shift start, usually three to four hours early, and make sure all the five axis mills were calibrated, and that the automatic tool changer magazines were all loaded correctly and the tooling was in good condition. You know, nothing was dulled or broken. After being there for several years, the company eventually gets acquired and new management comes in. I'm there from 3 to 4 in the morning until 1 to 2 p.m., sometimes earlier if a new job gets added to the floor. This schedule works fine for me. I get to beat traffic both ways, and the pay is also a bit higher. After a few weeks, people notice that I constantly leave early and always run over on hours, so they implement a new policy. Work starts at 9 a.m. and runs until 5 p.m. You have to be on the floor ready to go when the clock hits 9. I try to explain to my new boss exactly why I leave early, but he's more concerned about numbers and cash flow than what I actually do there. So, fine. You want me to work 9 to 5, I'll work 9 to 5. Instead of punching in at 4 a.m., I chill in my car until 8.45 and roll into the building. I wait until exactly 9 a.m., punch in, then head to the floor. I roll up to the first machine on the line and hit the emergency stop, which shuts down the machine instantly. I tell the operator the machine hasn't been set up yet and they need to wait until it's ready. I head down the line and punch the emergency stop button of every machine that I pass, telling each person the same thing, that it's not ready and to just go wait. So, I start with the first machine and start calibrating, verifying that everything there is up to specifications and ready to be used. I finally finish the first machine, which takes about 40 minutes, since I took my time. Meanwhile, the rest of the line is dead in the water. Nobody can do any work until their deck passes calibration and is certified to use. I'm partway through the second unit when I have my new manager breathing down my neck. He's asking why it's not running, what's going on, etc, etc. I sit back on my haunches and calmly explain to him that this is my job. The one that, until today, I used to come in hours early to do so that I didn't mess with the production schedule. That I have to get this done, and I should be ready to start the line in another, oh, five to six hours or so, boss. He tells me to unlock the machines and get the line moving. No can do. None of these machines are checked, and I'm not signing off on the certification until I'm done. Anything not certified gets instantly rejected by quality control. So, boss, you have two options. We can run the line and reject a million dollars in parts, or let me finish and lose a million dollars in production time, and then I go back to my old schedule tomorrow. That day, my coworkers got paid to do nothing. I got the new boss off my back, and he got reamed out for losing a full day's production. Man, how many stories have we read where it starts with, and then new management showed up? Ah, <sighs> you'd think they'd learn. You really would. Our next Reddit post is from Tough Painting. Many years ago, my wife and I kept a boat at a lake near our home. The marina had a restaurant that had an all-you-can-eat fried catfish on the menu. These were whole catfish that were just about the size of a grown man's head. We'd been eating there three or four times a month for the past three years. I held the record of 17 catfish consumed, and Pete, the owner slash cook, always said that I was maxed out and I could never beat my score. Now comes the malicious compliance. My wife and I had 10 family and friends visiting for my birthday, and we all went to the marina for dinner. I boldly and loudly announced that I was going to beat my record of 17 catfish. Obviously, Pete overheard my bragging and took our orders. A lot of beer was being consumed. Pete brought out nine platters, turned to me and said, Beat your record and everything is on the house. With cheers all around, Pete then said, Fail and you have to give your servers a 25% tip. Everyone, including me, agreed and we just knew that we were getting a free meal. Pete went back to the kitchen and brought out my first catfish. That sucker weighed five pounds. I couldn't even eat the one. Everyone laughed and we had a great time. And yeah, the girls got their tip and I never messed with Pete again. Pete and I remained friends until he passed away last year. He never tired of telling that story. Malicious compliance? Sounds more like delicious compliance. Our next Reddit post is from Olympus. 
When I was about 16 or 17, like any other kid at that age, I desperately wanted to go to a party that all my friends were going to. All of my friends were older than myself, so they had no curfew, or they were allowed to stay out very late. My dad, however, was a pain in the butt at that time, or at least that was my perception. He wouldn't let me go anywhere, and when I was allowed to go, he'd give ridiculous curfews that held no account with the nature of the event. Like going to the movies at 8, but demanding to be back home at 10. So that kind of limits your choices, right? And you don't want to be that friend who puts constraints on the group. Sorry, I digress. Anyways, that particular day, I negotiated for him to give me a later curfew. After a while, he stated that 2am was the absolute latest that I should be home. That sucked, because most of my friends had a 3am curfew, and the party was at least a half hour bike ride away. So, this would mean that I would miss more than one and a half hours of the party. Yeah, severe case of fear of missing out here. I tried to negotiate some more, but then I realized what date it was. Enter malicious compliance. You see, it was the last weekend of October on a Saturday. I don't think this is the same everywhere, but in the larger part of Europe, this means that daylight saving times ends on this day. At exactly 3 a.m., clocks are set back one hour. So I went to the party, but not by bike. I asked for a friend to drop me off, making sure that I would be there exactly on time. I made sure that my dad didn't hear me a minute too soon. At exactly 3 a.m., or better yet, 2 a.m. for the second time, I opened the door home and went inside. Needless to say, my dad was furious, demanding an immediate explanation as to why I was an hour late. When I said that I was exactly on time, pointing at his own radio-controlled watch, I could see his face turn all kinds of red, and an awesome mix of defeat and anger in his eyes. He sent me to bed, knowing I was right, and I complied, knowing that I was very wrong. Nevertheless, it was an awesome victory. Alright, down in the comments, I like this post from Deleted. When you're young, you sneak out of home to go to parties. When you're old, you sneak out of parties to go home. Also, I'd like to add one to that. <laughs> Once you become a dad, the only parties you go to are three-year-old birthday parties. Our next Reddit post is from Twin Sister Joyce. A few years ago, I bought a new shed sunroof combination for my garden. It was pretty expensive, thus I also paid for the company to build it. Knowing me, I would mess it up, so I was happy to pay for a professional to come fix that for me. The shed's roof looks like very thick sandpaper. The professional builder tacked it in place and that was that. I asked him whether or not glue would be needed to keep it in place but obviously I know nothing and that was a dumb question. Lo and behold, six weeks later, a mild storm blew off the entire topping of the roof. I called the company only to be told that I should have known this would be a temporary roof and these need to be changed like every year. Can you smell the BS? I replied that it had only been six weeks, so they had to come fix this. Nope, a storm was the reason for the damage, an act of God, so no help from them. Well, okay, they promised to send me a new roll of roof so I could replace it myself. I waited, but didn't get a new roof. I went to their Facebook page to find lots of people complaining about similar stuff. I wrote a review warning people to not buy their expensive sheds as they get built wrong and any damage resulting from this doesn't get resolved by them whatsoever. A half hour later, I get a phone call from the company. They tell me they'll come the next day to put on expensive shingles to make up for the damage at their own cost. But I do have to change my review. I waited for them to come fix it and they held to their promise. So did I. I wrote on their Facebook page that they came to fix my roof and even exchanged the material for a much more expensive solution on the very next day at their own cost. Needless to say, this caused a firestorm of customers demanding the same solution. You're welcome, buttholes. That was our slash malicious compliance. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.